In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. So we now arrive at the lesson from Father Celso back in 2003, November 2003. This is lesson two of five of the Call of Priests in the Divine Will. However, as with some of these old lessons, these old days of recollection, the recording um, did not start on time. And today's recording is only um, a total of 30 minutes. They missed a big chunk in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and read that which did not get recorded. And as a reminder, the paragraph at the top, which says, um, now that which, excuse me, now that which I manifest on my divine will and which you write, Louisa, can be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. That is the last thing we ended uh, with, with last week, this, this paragraph at at the top and the call of the priest to preach it throughout the world that in it nothing opposes either sacred scriptures or the gospel and that they are the support of one and the other um, here is the utility uh, in the middle here of the many things i have manifested to you the many surprising truths the promises of the so many goods which i must give to the children of the fiat voluntas tua they will be the gospel, the basis, the inexhaustible font from which all will draw the celestial life, the terrestrial happiness, and the restoration of their creation. Oh, how happy they will feel, those who with yearning will drink in large gulps from these fonts of my knowledges, because they contain the virtue of bringing the life of heaven and of banishing any unhappiness. So that's where we ended up last week. And uh, lesson two would begin here. So Louisa says, then in hearing this, I was thinking to myself about the big issue concerning the writings on the divine will, which are in Messina, brought there by the blessed memory of venerable father de Francia. How myself, and my other superiors absolutely want them here, while the superiors in Messina, rigorously recommended by the Venerable Father before dying, want to keep them over there for their publication when God pleases. So we do nothing but send letters of fire back and forth, them to keep them, and us to get them back. And I was feeling all worried, bored, and tired, and was saying to myself, 
How could good Jesus allow all this? Who knows whether he too feels disappointed? And he, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, you are worried, but I am not disappointed at all. On the contrary, I enjoy in seeing the interest that priests take in these writings, which will form the kingdom of my will. This means that they appreciate the great good of them, and each one would want to keep such a great treasure with himself to be the first to communicate it to others. And while the issue of who is going to win lasts, one approaches the other in order to consult one another on what to do. And I enjoy that more of my ministers get to know that there is this treasure so great of making known the kingdom of my divine will. And I use this to form the first priests of my coming kingdom of my fiat. My daughter, it is a great necessity to form the first priests. They will serve me like the apostles served me to form my church. And the ones who will occupy themselves with these writings in order to publish them, putting them out to print them, to make them known, will be the new evangelists of the kingdom of my supreme will. And just as the ones who are most mentioned in my gospel are the four evangelists who wrote it, to their highest honor and my glory, so it will be for those who will occupy themselves with writing the knowledges on my will in order to publish them. Like new evangelists, there will be greater mention of them in the kingdom of my will, to their highest honor and my greater glory, in seeing the order of the creature, the life of heaven on earth, the only purpose of creation, return into my bosom, Therefore, in these circumstances, I expand the circle, and like a fisherman, I catch those who must serve me for a kingdom so holy. Therefore, let me do, and do not be worried. So then we move on to the next chapter, which is February 5th, 1928. Promise in Eden of the Future Redeemer. Solemn promise in the Our Father of the Kingdom of the Divine Will. How God feels the joy of creation being repeated. So the highlighted part is where Father will be picking up. Um, so we'll just read the very beginning and through that, and then I will start the recording. Fiat. My poor mind feels as though fixed in the supreme fiat, and I feel like a little girl who, since she likes the beautiful lessons of her beloved teacher, always hangs around her, asking her a thousand questions to have the pleasure of hearing her speak and of learning new, more beautiful lessons. It, this is the thing that's so beautiful. This is not like St. Faustina. St. Faustina had locutions apparitions, visions. Louisa, you have to understand, did not have locutions, apparitions, and visions. She was one with God. And that's what the church is going to discover. And that's what the church is going to tell us about. Who is this Louisa that uh, Jesus himself dictated these words to her and as she wrote them down and as we read them, divine lives occur. So it says, <clears throat> uh, we want... Um, 
to, to read these beautiful lessons <clears throat> of blo beloved Louisa. Now, we want to hang around Louisa. We want to ask Louisa thousands of questions. Why? To have the pleasure of hearing her speak and of learning more, new, new more beautiful lessons. And while that teacher speaks, she remains there with her mouth open, listening to her. So many are the beautiful surprise, beautiful surprises that she gives her with her lessons. <clears throat> Such am I, a tiny little one, hanging around the light of the divine will, more than teacher, wanting to draw its life from the beautiful lessons um, it gives to my little soul. That's what we want, too. You have to, I mean, uh, if you're reading the divine will uh, one hour a day, Okay, now's my time. I'm going to read the divine will. You've made the divine will a devotional life. And you're not going to uh, live as God wants you to live. But if you are hanging around the light of the divine will, who, which was given to Louisa, wanting to draw its life from the beautiful lessons it gives to our little soul, then you're going to grow in the divine will. So therefore... If you're worried, if you're fearful, if you're anxious, uh, it's because you're not reading the divine will. So what does that mean? That means that you, as soon as a worry comes in, you have to go to, like Sister, Sister Asunta gave us um, a little phrase for every day. You know, and uh, that little phrase, if we repeat that throughout the day, will help us get through that day. Why? Because... It was dictated to Louisa by Jesus himself, therefore has a divine life. And as you read that phrase, it will help you. I mean, if you have the opportunity to read, read a sentence, read a paragraph. And this has to become your nourishment. You know, a lot of people say that Louisa lived on the, uh, on the Eucharist. That's not what Jesus says. Jesus says Louisa lived on the divine will. That was her life. That was her food. That was her nourishment. Because Jesus says, I have a food that you do not know of that is, that is doing the will of God. And, and now he teaches Louisa how to live in the divine will. So again, we want to draw life from the beautiful lessons that were given to Louisa by Jesus himself. And because, Louisa says, I am little, it delights in making me content, giving me such surprises of divine lessons never thought of by me. Or by anyone. Why? Because these are divine lessons. These are divine surprises. And, and, and therefore, it, we have to discipline ourselves to carry the writings of Louisa around with us. You know, the communists had the little red book of Mao in China, and they read it constantly. And that was the little red book of Mao. We have these, these divine lessons, divine surprises that Jesus wants to teach us that are of the Catholic Church, of the universal life that Adam lost. And God wants to reestablish that in us, but the only way that we can have this is not just by wanting it, but by reading it and putting it into practice. So Louisa says, So while I was thinking about the kingdom of the divine will and its, inter and its reigning upon me, it seemed as though difficult to me, my beloved Jesus coming out from when in my interior told me. So again, where is Jesus? Always in the interior of Louisa. My daughter, as Adam sinned, God made him the promise of the future Redeemer. Centuries passed, but that promise did not fail. The generations had the good of redemption. And as I came from heaven and formed the kingdom of the redemption, before departing for heaven, I made another promise more solemn of the kingdom of my divine will and this was in the Our Father. And so, so as to give it more value and to obtain it more quickly, I, God, made this formal promise in the solemnity of my prayer, praying the Father to let his kingdom come, which is, is the divine will on earth as it is in heaven. So again, we have the promise of Jesus. The promise to Adam has been fulfilled. And now the promise of Jesus that is now being fulfilled through Louisa. He says, I place my very self at the head of this prayer, knowing that such was his will, the Father's will, and that prayed by me, the Father would deny me nothing. More so, since I, God, prayed with his, the Father's very will, I asked for something 
which was wanted by my father himself. And after I had formed this prayer before my celestial father and certain that the kingdom of my divine will upon earth would be granted to me, I taught it to my apostles that they might teach it to the whole world so that one may might be the cry of all, your will be done on earth and as is in heaven. So, he says, after he prayed this prayer, then he formed his apostles, his first priests. And it's the same thing here. He, he's formed this in Louisa, and now he's teaching the priests. Uh, and, and that's why Father Gucci said every, every um, uh, prayer group should be under their bishop. Uh, now, when you go to your pastor and you say to your pastor, I would like to have a prayer meeting, you're under your bishop. You're immediately under your bishop. Why? Because the pastor represents the bishop in your parish. So, we, again, the, you don't have to write a formal letter to the bishop. That's already been done. All the bishops have been contacted in the United States, with the Father Bucci has said. Uh, the 14 pages that are on the internet uh, of EWTN. Uh, but you go to your pastor, you go to your priest, and you say, I would like to have a prayer meeting, and I'd like to be guided under you. I want it to be led, guided, and directed by you. And what happens is, you might be the one uh, to introduce that priest uh, to the divine will, to Luisa Picaretta. And at first he'll say, oh, you're making a big deal out of Luisa. Oh, you know, you know, nobody's like that. Oh, she, was a, she might have been a great saint. You say, Father, thank you very much. Could you read a little more? And then after a short while, as he's reading, he's going to say, well, Luisa was a little more than I thought. And then a little bit more, well, Luisa was... Eh. And what's going to happen is they're going to go, who is this Luisa? Who is she that Jesus says, everything I have is God, I deposit in you. He says that. He deposited in Our Lady all of redemption. He deposited in Luisa all of sanctification. This is the thing that's going to astonish the priests. So he says, A promise more sure and solemn I could not make. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Centuries are like a single point for us. But our divine words are accomplished acts and facts. So as soon as God says it, it's done. It's complete. My very praying to the celestial father, let it come. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Met that with my coming upon the earth, the kingdom of my will was not established in the midst of creatures. Otherwise, I would have said, My Father, let our kingdom, which I have already established on earth, be confirmed. Let our will dominate and reign. Instead, I said, Let the divine will come. Let the kingdom come. This meant that it must come, and the creatures must await the, the kingdom with that certainty with which they awaited the future Redeemer, because there is in my divine will bound and committed in those words of the Our Father, and when it is bi when it binds itself, whatever it promises is more than certain, more so, since everything was prepared by me, nothing else was needed, but the manifestation of my kingdom, which in this I am doing, in, with, and through, and for you, Louisa. Where is it manifested? In Louisa. Where is it? It's in Louisa. Who has this kingdom? It's Louisa. This is what the church is going to be so astonished. Because the priests who are, who are really um, uh, wanting what God wants, they're going to read this and they're going, to say, they're going to say, of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course this has to be. God could do nothing less than this. And that's what he's done. So he says, Jesus says, do you think that my giving you, Louisa, so many truths about my fiat is only to give you simple news? No, no. It is because I, God, want everyone to know that its kingdom is near. This is 1928. And to know its beautiful prerogatives so that all may love, all may yearn to enter, to live in a kingdom so holy, full of happiness, of all goods, now, that's, that's what our God is doing for us. He's saying, do you long for this? Do you know that it's near? Do you yearn to enter to live in this kingdom so holy? Are, do you yearn, le yearn to enter to live in this kingdom full of happiness and of all goods? Therefore, that which seems difficult to you is easy for the power of our fiat because it knows how to remove all difficulties and to conquer everything the way 
God wants it and, the, and when God wants it. So it's going to happen. And, and it's happening now for those who are being drawn to Louisa. And as you notice, there's not many. And that's fine. There were, there were not many at Bethlehem. There was a few uh, wise men and a couple shepherds. Uh, not many. No priest at that point. Uh, it, there was few at the crucifixion of Jesus. There was uh, the, 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 the ladies in St. John. Our, our lady and the ladies in St. John. Not many. At the Last Supper, there were few. Just the apostles. And why? Because what God loves, he keeps hidden. And if we knew about the, the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist, the churches would never be empty. We, if we really knew that that was the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, Jesus, the real presence of Jesus, worthy of adoration, worthy of worship, the churches would never be empty. But this is still a secret. Why? Because our minds are so close to the true life, the true light of God, the true love of God. Then I was doing my round of the eternal fiat according to my usual way and going around through the whole of creation. I was bringing all the works before the divinity to give to it the most beautiful homages and the great glory of all their works. So here, here again, Luis is teaching us. Uh, uh, doing our rounds in the eternal fiat in our usual ways, one with Louisa, going around throughout the whole of creation, uh, bringing all the works before God to give creation the most beautiful, to give creation the most beautiful homage or give to God the most beautiful homage and the great glory of all their works. But while I was doing this, I thought to myself, but what is the glory I give to my creator by bringing him all his works? Okay, that's our question. Uh, what glory do we give to God by bringing God all of his works? And Jesus, moving in our interior, told us, or told Louisa, My daughter, by doing so, you bring to us, God, the joy of our accomplished works. In fact, before we created the creation, they were inside of us, as though in deposit in our will. And we, God, did not have the glory we did not have the joy of seeing our works outside of ourselves, formed and accomplished outside of us. So, our works were formed when the creation was created. And if one goes around in their midst and looks at them and wanting to gather them all together around us and says to us, how beautiful are your works, how perfect, how holy their harmony, their perfect order tells, uh, tells who you are. And they, all of creation narrates your glory. We, God, feel the joy. We feel the glory of being repeated as if we were again extending the heavens, forming the sun and all of our works. See, that was Adam's job. Jesus said to Adam that he would have given voices to everything, every leaf on a tree, every, every grain of sand, every blade of grass, every drop of water, to proclaim how, how perfect and holy and loving and, and glorious God is. But Jesus says, I wanted Adam to be the voice of everything and everyone. Adoring him, loving him, praising him, thanking him in a divine manner. And he says, and everything was silent after Adam fell. When Jesus and Mary came, the, the harmony of adoring, loving, praising God started again. And everything got silent after that until Louisa. And now with Louisa... Luis is going throughout all of creation, adoring, loving, praising, thanking, and glorifying God in the name of everyone and everything. And now she's teaching us to do this. And one blink of the eye, I adore you for, for this blink, is, is in the prime act of God. And it includes everyone and everything, past, present, and future. Every grain of sand, every blade of grass, uh, every voice of every human that ever lived. Just one eye blink is just in a billion, trillion I love yous. But... It's for every blink that ever happened. It's for every beat. It's for every breath. It's for every step. So what's happening is this divine I love you is going from heaven, uh, from earth to heaven. Again, this divine I love you are the souls that are linked with Louisa uh, in every thought word and deed that you do as you do your preveni act in the morning drives Lucifer out of the world. He can't stay here. He is hearing 
what he thought he stopped through Adam. He, he is hearing what he thought he stopped when Christ was crucified. He is hearing what is going to continue and get louder and more, uh, more, uh, more love, adoration, glory, and praise and honor is going to go to God more now and it's just going to continue for all eternity. He is hearing for every soul that is linked with Louisa uh, all the love, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise of everything and everyone, past, present, and future. It's deafening to him. And he's going to try his darndest to try to, to try to destroy mankind. But the more that people read the divine will, the more that people put into practice these truths that Jesus gave to Louisa, the quicker his kingdom is going to dissolve. Just dissolve. It'll be gone. All of a sudden we're going to go, he's gone. And the earth, which is in opposition to the Father, is going to be in total submission. The flesh, which is in opposition to the Son, is going to be in total submission. The devil, which is in opposition to the Holy Spirit, is going to be gone. And then we're going to be under the, the tri our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living the divine life that God originally planned for Adam. How? Through Louisa. Why? Louisa has the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, the new Adam, the new Eve. And how glorious this is. So again, uh, what, what, what we see here, how beautiful are your works. They're perfect and holy. Their harmony, their perfect order tells us who you are, God, and narrate your glory. We feel the joy, the glory being repeated, God says, as if we, God, were again extended the heavens to form the sun and all our works. So the creation remains always in the act as though speaking by means of Louisa, the little daughter of our will. Who is the one who does this? Who is the one, really, who takes the place of Adam? It's Louisa. That's what Jesus is saying. So he says, this can happen also to you if you had decided in your will to make the many beautiful works you do, um, uh, you do not enjoy. But your, your joys begin when you see the works accomplished and if someone loving you often uh, brought them around you and say, and say to you how beautiful your works, you would not feel glorious in the joy of when you accomplish them being repeated. Such am I. The repetitions form my most beautiful, beautiful surprises. So God is asking us to pray with Louisa, to, to let Louisa teach you how uh, to give glory and honor and praise in all of creation. And, and you can't learn this on your own. I know many people say, well, I'm going to do my rounds. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to do my prayers. Well, the saints did that. We say, Lord, I want to do everything with, in, through, and for you when I'm linked with Louisa. I want to be one with Louisa. She did this, Lord. I don't know how to do this. Louisa, I want to do everything with, in, through, and for you so that you can do, I can be one with God because you have the true life of Jesus. You have the true life of Mary. And I want to possess this as well. Teach me, Louisa, how to do this. And she teaches you as you read. Okay, so don't, don't find an excuse. And there's many, many excuses not to read. Oh, I don't have the time. Oh, I've got other things to read. I've... God says, fine. And see, right now, God is saying to every soul, what do you want? What do you want? I will give you what you want. And, and, and he's saying, who? I mean, do you, do you, what do you want? Do you want a new job? Do you want a new car? Do you want money? What do you want? Do you want to be happy? Do you want your family blessed? What do you want? What, what will make you happy? And we have to say to Jesus, all I want is to live in the divine will to be linked with Louisa. And Jesus says, are you sure that's what you want? What about this? What about that? What about this? This is what you've always dreamed of. Do you want this? And we have to say to Jesus, all I want is to live in the divine will, one with Louisa. I want to learn these truths. I want to put them into practice. And God says, well, you know, if you really want this, then you can possess it. But he he, he will give you everything. He's given the devil hell because that's what the devil wants. So you've got to be very, very careful what you want because he's going to give it to you. And you're going to say, well, this is the will of God. No, it's the will of God because that's what you want. And it, if you want the divine will, then you have to prove it to Jesus that you want this more than anything else. That's why I've said 
promise Jesus that you will read uh, and, and study the divine will every day. Promise Jesus this. And Jesus will say, you really want this, don't you? You're, you're, even even that you have a full day of things, you're, you're getting the divine will in. You're finding the divine will, reading the divine will more than novels, more than the television, more than the radio, more than newspapers. You're making the divine will the center of your life. And God says, then you really want this, don't you? That's what Jesus has to see. Because, you know, your family doesn't want it. Your neighbors don't want it. Your parishioners don't want it. They want what they want. And Jesus is asking you, well, what do you want? Therefore, you have to really give up everything to have the divine will alone. And then, when you give up everything to try to live in the divine will, one with Louisa, then you have everything. So this is what he says. Psalm 24, August 2nd, 1928. How it is absolute will of God for these writings to come out. The work of redemption and the kings of the divine fiat are linked together. The field of divine will explanations. I was feeling all concerned because of these blessed writings, and I thought of their being released is always a torture for me. Because, see, Louisa didn't want anybody to know about this. Louisa didn't want anybody to know what she and Jesus talked about. She says, this is between me and Jesus. Now, you look at the so-called prophets of today, visionaries of today, as soon as they get something, they go, i got to tell everybody. i got to put it on the internet. i got to publish it in the newspapers. Completely different from Louisa. I don't want anybody to know this, Jesus. And she says, that's why the thought of these being released was always torment for me. And then the so many incidents that happen, now one way, now another. Many times, these makes, these time, many times this makes me think that maybe it is not the will of God that they be published. Otherwise, so many things would not happen. Who knows whether the Lord wants my sacrifice in words, but with facts. He wants to spare me a sorrow so great that only the thought that I might oppose his divine will makes me say fiat, fiat. So she says, I will write this because God wants this fiat. But she didn't, I'll tell you, when 1938, uh, excuse me, 1938, 1947, when these things were supposedly condemned, Louisa said, good, condemn them. She was like, Thank God that these aren't coming out. I mean, she was really happy. And God, and why? She never wanted them out. So God says, okay, fine. If this is what you want, Louisa. Then this is what will happen. We'll put them in the Vatican. We'll leave them there for uh, 50 years. And then we'll bring them out. And that the great thing about this is, is uh, Louisa didn't want anybody to know about this. That's why you can say these are authentic. Because, you know, you read the, the, the publishing. Oh, let me write another book of what Jesus told me, told me the other day. You know, it's just... Drives me nuts. You know, people are reading all these things of all these people. Hey, did you hear about this guy? He's just all of a sudden he's saying this and this and this. Did you hear about this other lady? She's saying this, this, and this. Read Louisa. Don't be distracted by uh, the the words that are said all around us. Read Louisa, and, and the souls that uh, really uh, are not. Um, uh, drawn to the to all the other words that are out there and those that are focusing on louisa have passed the test uh there's many people saying many things and they're nice things. oh this person is talking about the divine will but jesus says no one before and no one after can teach about the divine will but louisa and the lord can prepare souls to go to go to louisa but when you start looking at uh what everybody else is saying you're going backwards you know, you have the divine will. If you, even when you're reading the lives of the saints, the lives of the saints are great. They're wonderful. They're holy. They're beautiful. But it's not the divine will. Oh, i got to read the lives of the saints tonight. Well, it's nice. But it's not the divine will. You have to prove to Jesus that you want the divine will more than anything. See, we're not talking about the saintly life. We're talking about the sanctity of sanctities. But while I was thinking of this, this is the sorrow that she's going through. My always love of Jesus moved to my interior and told me, my daughter, the will of God that the writings of my divine will come to light is absolute. And, and as many incidents as may occur, it will triumph over all. So Jesus wants these writings out. So he says, and even if it should take years and years, uh, it will know how to dispose everything 
so that its absolute will will be accomplished. The time in which they will come to light is relative and conditional upon when the creatures dispose themselves to receive a good so great and upon those who must occupy themselves with its being, being its criers, making the sacrifice so as to bring the new era of peace, the new sun, which would dispel all the clouds of evil. So Jesus says, very clearly, uh, uh, you have to dispose yourself, okay? To receive a good so great. Who wants this? And those who must occupy themselves, this is the priests, of being its criers, the proclaimers, and make the sacrifice so as to bring the new era of peace, the new sun, which will dispel all the clouds of evil. The devil will flee. Father. Yes. Okay, okay, we're, we're right in the middle of a talk. Thank you. Okay, so here, what's really, really important is this, that the priests will be the proclaimers, the priests will make the sacrifice so as to bring the new era of peace, the new sun, which will dispel all the clouds of evil. So again, this is what's most important for us. It's most important that we uh, uh, prove to Jesus that we want what he wants. Now, if you knew how many graces and lights I keep prepared for those whom I see disposed to occupy themselves with them. Okay, so he's talking about the priests. If you knew how many graces and light I have prepared for those whom I see disposed to occupy themselves with them, they will be the first to feel the bomb, the first to feel the light, the first to feel the life of my fiat. Look at how uh, I must... Look how I keep my hands prepared, the clothes, the food, the ornaments, the gifts of those who must occupy themselves with them. This is the priests. Again, uh, the, the, the mistake that has happened is that the lay people have taken uh, the jobs away from the priests. It's happened in the church. It's happened since Vatican II. What, what happened? I remember uh, before Vatican II, we would all be kneeling at the communion rail. We'd all be seeing the Holy Communion on our knees. And we left the church at the same time as we're doing today. But now you have, you know, hundreds of Eucharistic ministers. What happened? You know, the church shows us that there are extraordinary Eucharistic ministers. That's when the priest cannot give communion. Or when if there's a, a hundred thousand people at, the, at that time. But for an ordinary parish, uh, it, Jesus shows very clearly it must be the priests. Now, a lot of people will disagree with me, but that's not what Jesus, you know, I mean, what, what happened? We had more people in church in the 50s than we do now. And it was the priest who gave out communion. Uh, and now what's happened? He says, uh, he says, I, God, will give the gifts to those who must occupy themselves with these. So, again, the divine will is given to us through the priests, he says. But I am looking to see who are the true disposed ones so as to invest them with the prerogatives that are needed for a work so holy, which I, God, so much love, and I, God, want them to do. However, I must also say to you, woe to those who are opposed or who might place obstacles to the divine will. You, however, do not move anything, not even one comma of that which is needed to prepare a kingdom of my divine will, so that by doing what is needed to give this great good to creatures, nothing may be lacking on my part and on yours, Louisa, so that as soon as the creatures dispose themselves, they might find everything in, in place and what is needed. So again, that's uh, showing us. He says, so did I not do the same in the work of redemption? I, God, have prepared everything. I, God, did and suffered everything. And in spite of the so many adverse circumstances that I saw, my very apostles vacillating, doubtful, and timid, to the point of running away from me when they saw me in the hands of the enemies, being left alone and not having the good of seeing any fruit while on earth, In spite of all this, I neglected nothing of what was needed for the complete work of redemption, so that when they would open their eyes to look at what I done, they would find all the good in order to be redeemed, and nothing might be lacking to them to be able to receive the fruit of my coming upon earth. 
So we'll end there, and we'll only have like a 10-minute break, and uh, we'll be right back, okay? Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me, and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat. Et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.